Good evening, everyone. We will start our January the 9th committee meetings of the Hammond County Legislative Body. Uh, I ask that all commissioners turn your mics on. Let's have a healthy meeting. Try to get some work done tonight. We'll start with our jail center public safety committee. Chairman Horner, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, at this time, I'll call the Justice Center Public Safety Committee to order. If there's anyone wishing to address this committee on agenda items only, you may do so at this time. Seeing there is none, uh, item 3A, no business, and number item 4A, Justice Center Project Update, Tony Pettit with Burwell Construction. So uh, we had a real wet December in case anybody was out of town, uh, but they still have managed a little progress. Our job is, and I go off the building here, our job is built at 36% complete. It sounds wonderful, except you got to keep in mind that 20% of that is stored materials to try to help inflation and fight that issue that we've had in the past. The good news is micro piles are complete. so. We finish going this way, not that way. The contractor has not, uh, he's going back through and making sure all those are right. We had a couple of things there that uh, we're discussing about the cost of the, those and see how they are. And I haven't got a report from the contractor yet on the micropiles. And interrupt me if you got a question anytime and I'll give you a chance at the end. The foundations are 98% complete. Uh, you look, look up here on the, the picture in the lower, in this picture is the lower left corner. You'll see some uh, micro piles in that gravel area that's dug out ready to be poured. Those are poured uh, now. And uh, so the foundations, like I said, is 98% complete. The concrete shear walls, the walls that go up and kind of keep it, the building from racking, they're 50% 50, 50 complete. Steel is five and a half percent erected. You kind of see all that back in the back with metal deck on it. That's phase one, phase two, and the beginning of phase three steel. And that's how they detail it. So phases really don't mean anything to you and I, except we got some steel stuck, stuck up in the air, and that's good. The completion right now is scheduled for May of 2024. I'm gonna hit the contractor's uh, schedule. And that's a couple of months out than what we anticipated when we were issued the contract. I think the contractors are analyzing the schedule and what the micropiles did to him. We'll hear more about that in the next meeting. And um, so, again, questions on progress? Oh, there's the swimming tub, bathtub. <laughs> Any questions? Item 4B, the change order, number 9. Okay. You should have with you a change order, and, and we've got uh, five items on that change order. We'll go over and, and as we go through them, ask questions, and I'll try my best to get you the answer. Um, the first one was an uh, issue about... Uh, some drawings just updated. The architect issued uh, some drawings because of an RFI that cost that zeroed out the contractor, and our architect worked that out to where it's a zero cost. But the change order is to get the drawings into the contract documents, so that's how come that's in there as a zero cost change order. Um, right when we got the job, the state of Tennessee's reviewers of the building look at some items and we the architect changed from a uh, up i think they upgraded uh, they changed project managers on the job this was brought up january of last year or february of last year that these these drawings were reviewed and changed and we just never went back and called them back up so some of these items are going to be caused or uh instigated initiated by the state 
as they reviewed the bid document. So we bid the bid the project, turned back around, and then the state made some final review comments on it. And then the contractor is now caught up enough to where he's pricing those changes. So these are most of these changes. The uh, up the PCO is pending change order number 30 updated the grading walls at assembly quarter 1029 and that's going to be in front of the shelled courtroom and that cost uh, involved fire rating top and bottom of the walls uh, changing some doors door hardware out to, to the fire rated doors and um, caulking along those doors fire rating itself that's $8,963. PCO 32 um, is uh, field change FC5. So we're going all the way back to the beginning. And uh, they updated the drawings there too. And that one's $48,827. It's, it's quite involved. Uh, I think the pack was over 100 pages that goes with this with drawings and notes. And this is mainly some uh, rated shafts, some fire dampers added, which involves the fire dampers, the electronics that go with the fire dampers, and the conduit and the power for those fire dampers. And um, that's the big one. That's, and that's just where the state of Tennessee said, we understand the code you're trying to, to draw here and what the contractor did but what has to happen is you have to rate these shafts around um, these issues and get the uh, up to fire rating when you got fire separation so that's that's the, the catalyst of that 48,000 and the same thing for the next one the next one's kind of title is kind of misleading so it's RFI 168 pipe invert update that's really not what happens in this change order. This change order also has uh, a storm drain pipe. He just called it a different time. The state of Tennessee has to have a rating around this storm drain pipe that comes down from the roof, back down into the building and back out, back out to the street. So basically in all, if you recall the drawings, there's three wings on these towers and each wing has a, uh, through that through the has a wreck area so in that wreck area you have this great big downspout for layman's terms that comes down through the corner there and then they have to fire rate that uh, downspout big pipe and uh, so that's what that seventy one hundred and sixty eight dollars is for is that something that should have been looked at um, in the earlier drawing or is it because <laughs> that we've updated the firewalls or what what's precipitated this change the state the state of Tennessee did a review on their drawings and it was in review when it went to bid and then they had some comments come back after the bid and so the state is the last say and they'll have another say at this uh, in the end because I see it happen all the time is they'll catch things that as they interpret the code versus what the architect interprets the code. The architect goes back, tries to negotiate what the code really means, but the state has the final say. So the state instigated these changes. Okay, when you, when you talk about fire rated drain, I assume that means if there is an incident and the water is flowing and it has to have a way to escape, is that what that means? Well, they or? consider it a shaft. Mm -hmm. So they don't want a chimney effect if something starts a, on fire at the lower level, they want that, that if it is a shaft and it gets in that wall, they want the outside of that wall protected for a one hour. It could rain, technical degrees, I haven't got my head right now, but it can burn for so long before it breaches that okay. shaft. So basically that's this 4800 or $7,800 uh, change. The 48,000 added some walls added more fire rated walls which is the same effect they want the fire to be able to burn on this side before this side gets in danger 
it's one hour wall or two hour walls and then the same thing there they'll have duct going in for your air conditioning and stuff and the fire dampers and uh, the controls for those fire dampers gets expensive when you add that many. Thank you. Um, are those rated walls, are they going to be CMU or are they? They're both. They're both. There's it, there's some in the courthouse area okay. that are drywall and got to be rated. But nothing about. exposed to the inmates would be less than CMU? Yes. Okay. Everything's in secure areas is CMU. Okay. What is CMU? Yeah. I'm sorry. Concrete block. <clears throat> Concrete masonry unit. That's what that means. <laughs> Good question. There's no there's no question. <laughs> nice Block. Did these plans? They went to Nashville to. They, they went to Nashville Walmart. two or three weeks before it bid. The same time that we put it out for bid. Okay. We be in the county. Put it out for bid. It went to to the state of Tennessee in Nashville for review. We went ahead and bid with some comments in it but we got our final comments like february or something do we need to expect several more of these well uh, here's my experience that's a good question uh, you won't expect any more from the reviewer until we get to the end of the project and then what you will find more than anything is the re is the inspectors here locally, and sometimes they bring the state in. And I'm experiencing it down at the community center right now. So they'll come in and they'll find a, <coughs> well, they won't find an exit sign in here, but they'll find an exit sign in an assembly area and it may be hidden by something. So they'll ask you to move it, or they ask you to add another one, or there's, there's uh, things that go off called audibles with strobe lights and exit the buildings they actually have somebody saying exit the building <coughs> whatnot that's being tested down there now that project and they may say it's not loud enough or we can't see it or something like that and we'll have to add something there too hopefully to not this extent but typically that happens in bigger projects so basically this was all state mandated yes Anyone else? There are a motion to put this on the agenda. I make a motion. I have a motion. Do I hear a second? I'll second. Thomas Doty, second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. That's all I have. <coughs> All right, thank you, Chairman Horner. We'll move now to our Finance Committee. Chairman Hahn, you are recognized, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The Finance Committee has now come to order. Do we have any visitors wishing to speak? We're moving on. We have a, a recurring business. And again, you can take a look at the December 2022 uh, information uh, only there, no action is necessary. Looked at at your leisure and review the acceptance of monthly checks for December of 2022. So moved. So moved, Mr. Doty. Uh, I have a second. Second. We got a second from Mr. Richardson. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? So moved. Moving down into new business, item 4A, agreement between Hamlin County, Tennessee and Microvote General Corporation. Mr. Mayor. Commissioners, um, in your packet is a contract, uh, an agreement uh, with Microvote Corporation. Last, last month you approved the, the uh, bid of microvote for the new voting machines for 90 voting machines and this is the contract for that as well as the maintenance agreement um, they are agreements that run from uh, January of, of this year to through December of 2025 and uh, the, the, this is the, the contract to go with the bid for the voting machines 
Any questions? This is page four by the state, correct? All 90. Not the maintenance. Not the maintenance, but, but the, the machines. machines are, yeah, and we'll have a, a, a budget amendment a little later, <coughs> okay. uh, which we're adding the expense to the budget, and then we'll add the revenue once we get reimbursed. We have to pay up front and then seek okay. reimbursement. That's all. Okay, do we have a motion? So moved. Do we have a second? Second. Motion and a second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any other questions? Moving down to item 4B, contract for court fines and fees collection services with Purdue Brandon. Mr. Mayor. In, in your packet is um, a cover letter from Circuit Court Clerk Teresa West and um, a contract uh, with the law firm that uh, uh, she is recommending to do um, fines and fees collection uh, one, for, for the fines and fees that her collection program that she does now in-house does not, can, cannot collect. And from what Teresa tells me is, is that uh, this firm, and there was another one that she compared the cost and, and their services um, uh, this is a lot of what they do and they have special um, or they have ways of getting information and running folks down who owe money that Teresa's folks don't have so uh, she's recommending that um, um, this co this company or this firm be retained to to uh, to collect fines and fees that that her staff uh, does not and there will be a 20% uh, fee added on to what the individual owes, and that's what the, this firm will, will receive. Do I have a motion to accept? So moved. Mr. Doty, second. Second. Oh, Joe, I'm sorry. I thought you were fair catching there for a second. Uh, we have a motion and a second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Anybody have any questions or comments? Yes, Mr. Horner. I think you probably answered it. But that's no cost to the county for that. It's off a percentage of collections. Right. Okay. What was the, what did you say? I'm sorry. No, no uh, cost to the county. This right. agreement yeah. is no right. cost to the right. county. It's <laughs> Good point. Mr. Mayor, is that a large amount that's on the books? Or? I don't know, Rodney. I, yes. Just, but it, it's, I mean, Teresa's program does a really good job. And the, these are some folks that they just can't track down or do not respond to what efforts they make. Is there a possibility of us to get a list of that, at least the bottom line? Sure. Any other questions? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Have we used a service like that before, Mr. Mayor? <clears throat> In this particular? I don't recall. Okay. So this would, this could be over and above what she collects. What she's already doing. Yes. Okay. Now, uh, <clears throat> several years ago, it's probably been 10 years ago, more than that maybe, is um, she added a person uh, to do collections. Do those she more than paid for herself. Right. You know, and that kind of thing. It's, it's gone very well. This is just another step over and above in collection. Yes. What do you do if? Yes, Miss Howe. What do you do when somebody you know um, maybe they lost their job and they can't? They have they have a partial pay okay. program. Okay. So they, they do have a partial pay program. Okay. Thank you. In, in no, no problem. Miss Howe, what they also do is the judge the judge will uh, the person will appear before the judge and the okay. judge reviews they have periodic reviews on these collections <clears throat> any other comments or questions moving on to item 4 C former Oak Tree Plaza shopping center purchase mr. mayor first first comment if you would on your on your agenda mark through former it's still the Oak Tree Plaza. 
It's, it's not changed names, so it's still, so we'll, we'll correct that, and that's my error. And, but what I want to do the, uh, tonight is, is just give you an overview of, of the search for um, a location for the new health department and where we are on that, and, um, and then ask for some direction uh, from, from the committee and the commission. Um, we've been searching for a location for uh, a new health department for several months now. Um, it's been... Um, it's been a challenging search just because of the cost of, of real estate now and the availability of real estate in the areas where the health department wants to locate. And uh, we think uh, that we have found a location that will work for the health department. Uh, you have this presentation in your, in your packet if you want to thumb through this while we go. And, and I'll talk about some of the, some of the illustrations. So, um, what the health department and the state health department people, uh, Josh Gibson is out of Nashville. He's the one who is working with the various counties. I think there's, there's either 15 or 17 counties in Tennessee are getting new health departments uh, through ARP money. And um, so in working with, with uh, Josh, he, he uh, the local health department folks are saying this is what we think we need and then he estimates how much land uh, is needed and so uh, it was determined that uh, this project needs about two acres and one is, is is to keep the operation on a single level and then two is to have a drive-through area for uh, let's say flu uh, flu vaccines or if we have, have a, you know, another COVID outbreak, COVID testing or COVID um, vaccinations as well. But they want to, uh, what uh, Ashley Lyons, our director, uh, calls her, her Chick-fil-A drive-through. You know, that's kind of a covered drive-through with heat for her staff and, and that kind of thing. So they want that. So, um, um, so what, what's needed, what they determined they needed was two acres of property to put a 12 to 14,000 square foot building on located near their patients, space for a drive through and also a, a community meeting room, just like they have upstairs uh, off, off the uh, West Main Street entrance. This heat map <clears throat> that I asked the health department to map where their patients live where their clientele lives so that during this search process uh, we'll know you know where the people are coming from and we can locate uh, near them or, or approximately you know near them and so in this heat map um, what this is is it shows in the colored area um, is let's see the, the dotted line circle is a mile from the health department from the current health department and it's it's right here and then you have the yellow is the is the greatest concentration of, of patients that use the health department and then different shades of red uh, shows where the the other uh, patients live and uh, and so this the black line I think is uh, it's a five mile radius of the health department, but the dotted line is a one mile uh, radius from from the current health department. So we have this to use to um, show us uh, where where do the folks live that use the health department to help us to guide us a little bit on where to look for um, a new health department location. There wasn't on South Cumberland. They looked at some some of the properties on South Cumberland. It was a challenge because you'd have to put several of those pieces together uh, to get the two acres, and so that wasn't as practical as as looking uh, other places. We looked at, at the property um, where the new car wash is out there, where uh, what Lee Industry used to be. It's uh, it's like two hundred and fifty thousand dollars an acre, um, so uh, that wasn't as um, practical either so uh, where uh, what we have found and what we I think want, want you to consider is um, uh, locating the health department in the Oak Tree Plaza 
off Buffalo Trail. And it's 27 um, and a third acres, 48,000 square feet, 37,000 of it is vacant. Encore Theatrical Company owns uh, the strip center. It has two tenants in it now and, and Family Dollar Store and, and Maddie's Bass, uh, Bounce House. Uh, it is along the Cumberland Street uh, corridor uh, near the health department patients. If you look at, um, maybe you can see it hopefully on your screen in front of you, there's, um, uh, we, we placed a, a mark um, on this on this map right here is where it's just outside the one mile um, circle where the current health department is, is where this shopping center is. And it's, it's, it's near, it's right in the middle uh, or close to the center of where the, uh, the patrons of the health department. So it's located where we need it to be located. Um, what our, our thoughts are is to focus on uh, development of the health department, about 13,000 square feet. Uh, they, uh, in, in the discussions with the health department folks, they have, currently have 14,000 square feet on two floors, no elevator, very inefficient use of that space. They think uh, that they can work with their 12, 13, um, with a drive-through and a community meeting room. Um, create uh, that would be, so that would be in this concept now this is just a concept drawing that we had uh, the architect that uh, you retained for this project prepare um, it, right here's the health department part right here and then here's the drive-through where the drive-through would be um, here is family dollar store and and then the bounce house is right here and there's a vacant area right here and uh, but in in this section right here is is I think around 32,000 square feet. So there's plenty of room to locate the health department in that portion, and we'll leave us room to for county office space to be here in this concept. And and in this concept, we kind of thought, uh, or it was me, um, out looking out in the future about relocating the rescue squad and ambulance service and uh, this would be a location for that and it would be in the rear of the building in this concept one thing too is it's not on this drawing but right here is we would locate a um, it's in it's I think on the one in, in or maybe not it's it's um, the impound lot the sheriff's department impound lot that we now lease from the city of Morristown we could develop uh, uh, in the back of that building and be sure that it's secure and have cameras and light lighting and, and all, all that and, mm -hmm. and so we would we could reduce um, that lease uh, obligation that we have we could also locate the employee health clinic in this space which the space we now lease um, so there's there's some some operations that we can move to this central location and and, and uh, not have to uh, have those expenses and, and use some, some of those dollars to offset the expenses of operating this area. Okay, so the cost of the property is about 1.8 to 1.9 million dollars. Uh, how would we pay for it? Uh, we would use the 1.1 million that we'll get from the sale of the health department building to 911. Uh, we may, depending, I don't, I don't have an answer on this, and we won't until much later, whether there'll be any grant money, health department grant money available to, to purchase the property with. I wouldn't go into this counting on grant money to be used to purchase this. I think that money will be used for finishing out the health department. And, uh, and then so we would have to use some of our general fund reserves uh, to pay for uh, the balance. As far as the cost of the health department renovation, um, the architect gave me uh, just a, a budget number of $225 per square foot at 13,000 square feet. That's $2.9 million. Uh, a timeline of six months of planning and about a year of construction, so about 18 months before we would walk in the door and we would pay for it with the state grant. There's enough state grant money 
using the match to buy the property with, that's our, that's the money that we would get from 911. We would use that to uh, pay for the property, and then the state grant would pay for the renovation um, of the space. Uh, so we have a state grant of 3.4 million, estimated cost of 2.9, so we've got some, some leeway there, and then we could see if there's any money there that we could uh, use in the purchase of the property. Then as far as cost of, of the new office space, Again, our, our thoughts and efforts and money would, would be focused on uh, renovating the health department space and getting that done. Um, seven to 10,000 square feet of, of office space is, is in this area with the blue and in, in, in this column right here. And um, at $200 a square foot, I use $200 because there would be some, a common wall that would be paid for by the by the health department grant. Uh, you'd have uh, some HVAC and other mechanical expenses that will be paid for by the state grant. So, uh, so that would be in a range of 1.4 million to $2 million to renovate that. Uh, how we'd pay for it would be, we could add that as an addendum to uh, the health department bid so that would be bid kind of separate. You'd have the health department, like, kind of like we, we did this with the Justice Center. We had some, some not addendums, but alternates rather. That's that, I used the wrong word, it's alternates. And we could put an alternate to that bid and that could be bid separate and then include that in the contract if, if uh, the cost is something we can pay for. Now, in the meantime, our, what happens in the year and a half before um, we walk in the door and, and um, there will be some operating expenses for the shopping center. Uh, what um, we've gathered is, is some information from Encore and what they spent. They've owned it for about a year. And so uh, what money did they spend? Uh, the utilities, mo their biggest expense was utilities. Uh, their maintenance and of the building and, and of the yard and, and insurance. Um, so the operating costs were about $51,000 for the space. You have lease income from the two tenants of about twenty eight seven, And then CAM charges, which is your common area maintenance charges, which um, uh, we would charge, we would charge uh, family dollar in the bounce house, and if we leased out the other space in between them, we would charge them a percentage of our costs, um, and it's, it's outlined in their lease agreements uh, what costs that, that we could charge them for based on the percentage of the total square footage, like family dollar, it's 16% of the total square footage of the, of the shopping center. For the bounce house, it's 6%. So that would generate about uh, about five thousand dollars. So that would be the income. So we would have to subsidize um, the operation some during the year. Um, so basically, what I wanted to do is just get put this information in front of you, uh, and make sure you know what's going on, what we've identified, and then ask uh, if you want us to continue our negotiations with Encore. And um, that would be the next step, that we continue our negotiations with them. And they provide, they've been very forthcoming with all the information, all the leases and, and their expenses. And, and uh, so that's, that's what I'm asking for, Mr. Chairman. And no, with the goal would be to next month come uh, with, uh, I guess, a proposal and a purchase agreement. Do I have a motion? Motion first, please. Uh, let's do that after we get okay. the Motion. Mr. Richardson, motion. Second. I'll second. Mr. Doty, second. All in favor, signify by question. Question. I've got oh, questions. Oh, I'm sorry. You asked me. Yeah, that. I did. The mayor, you're saying that we should not uh, look at the half a million differential in the cost of renovation for the grant. We shouldn't even try to consider that into the, the payment? I, I wouldn't go into it. Okay. And if it's if it's available during the process, that's a bonus. Okay. <clears throat> Mayor, yeah. Okay. 
So I'm sorry, Rodney. Go ahead. No, sir. I got two things. Now, Family Dollar and, and the bounce house, mm -hmm. has the county rented property to businesses before? Is there any? Have we been a landlord? Yes, is there anything there that? Liability. I don't, I don't, since my time, <coughs> I don't remember us being a landlord. Now, uh, the landfill has rented some residential property that they've had. So as far as being legal, uh, I think we're okay, but we can research that just to be absolutely. And the second legal. thing, yes. the second thing is if we, when we remodel the building, Will codes not make us go in and in the family dollar part of it if we have to? Mm, uh, that's question. a good question. I don't know. I don't know. Any other questions? Discussion? Yes, sir. Do you foresee a problem, Ben? That's a two-line road, Mr. Mayor. For getting in and out of there as far as the other places. You mentioned the rescue squad, if I didn't misunderstand you. I, I did, in, the re in, in my conversations with the rescue squad, I showed them the concept. They, they're not all in on it, and, and, uh, and based on, on comments that, that you folks have made, it is just to kind of go slow with them and our, that's why our focus is on the health department. But that is one of the concern of some of the, the uh, rescue squad and ambulance service folks or is the two lane road, yes. One more question. You mentioned about putting the impound lot for the county there. Yes. I know as a towing service, it's hard to get in and out of that particular area. And most towing services are on a schedule as far as getting from this one to the next one. Do you foresee a problem with that? Because I know we've had a problem in the past with our company getting out of there. No, I mean, I haven't, I haven't considered that. In, in, in discussions with the sheriff, that has not come up, that we were more concerned about security was our biggest concern. Is that it? Yes, Mayor. sir, thank you. Chairman. Oh, Ms. Howell. So, thank you. Where is the M? The impound lot for, that we're paying 5000 of. Yes. Where is it now? It's in the old Roy Widener complex. Oh, on okay. Liberty Hill. North Liberty yeah. Hill Road. It was the city's impound lot before they built their their um, center out on the west end. Yeah. And they moved their impound lot out there and we okay. leased them there. So the Widener, uh, so, so we're renting it from, but that's where it is on that, on that road, the Widener. Uh, Correct. Yeah. It's up on, up on and it's not, road. doesn't have all the cameras and the, everything you need. It has some, but we've had some issues oh. there. Okay. And Whoa. plus, and, and Sheriff, you might want to talk about the building that you're talking about you'd like to have in the impound lot. Well, we say these vehicles, these vehicles, has, they're in our care and we have to take care of them oh, okay. until they're awarded to us. This impound lot has been broken into at least four times now. We have put some cameras up. The city has some cameras, but yeah. that's having issues as well. And the new impound lot, I was asking to have some type of a prefab garage so we can put vehicles in. Uh, for instance, our vehicles, if we have a window put out at night, we can put it in out of the weather if it's raining. Right now we have to use, or well, was used in the rescue squad. Okay. Two quick comments I'll make is, uh, one, Mayor, we've leased things before to attorneys and judges. Is that any, I mean, they kind of typically the same type thing well, as a landlord. To, I'm glad you mentioned that. We are leasing some, we're subleasing some space to the mm -hmm. state for Judge mm -hmm. Bonifat. So, so right. it, it, it wouldn't be unprecedented. Right. Okay, and secondly, uh, the driving force in this whole operation has been the health department, correct? Absolutely. I mean, because this is their area that they'd like to be in. They've, uh, they've agreed that this is a uh, potentially good site for them. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Did I understand you correctly? You did look at some other places besides just this one? Yes. Were they all in the same ballpark as far as the financial aspect of it, sir? I don't know. I, I was not. I didn't go on all the on all the visits. Um, 
the health department director, Ashley, and the regional director went with Mr. LaBelle, and the fellow from Nashville went on one trip, so they went on all the visits. Anyone else? Okay, let's, uh, we have a motion and a second, so let's vote. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Uh, aye. Any opposed? So moved. <coughs> Item 4D, Accident Claim Settlement. Mr. Mayor. In Caps. that packet is a, is a memo from me um, outlining a, a situation where we had uh, an inmate, one of our trustees on one of our riding lawn mowers, and, and um, there was a, a motorist who tried to pass him on 3rd third, third North, and he turned into her and, uh, without giving any, any notification. And, and so it caused some damage to a vehicle. Um, we turned that into our, our uh, insurance company. Uh, they, their finding was it was 50-50, both were at fault, and so uh, they didn't want to pay on it, um, which, well, they didn't want to pay on it. Then, um, so uh, the attorney, the, this, this motorist got an attorney and, and was talking to, uh, uh, Kendall County attorney and uh, the damage was around 20 or excuse me about $2,500 and so um, there was a settlement reached to right at uh, $1,250 which was half and uh, the motorist his attorney or her attorney had indicated that they would file suit and so it'd be cheaper for us to pay the settlement than it would be to defend the lawsuit. So that's why we're coming to you with this, uh, with this recommendation. Make a motion to approve. We got a motion. Second. Second. Any discussion? Any questions? Did you ask something, Mr. Capps? No, Mr. was asking, uh, looking back to me as if I had anything to add, and really it's just a matter of practicality. Anyone else have a question or comment? We have a motion. We have a second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? <clears throat> so carried. Item 4E, resolution to transfer funds from, <clears throat> excuse me, from general purpose school funds to federal projects fund for fiscal year ending June 30th. 2023. Ms. Tracy. Good evening. Um, some of you may have been here the last time we made this request. Um, but just a little background. Our federal programs fund operates on a reimbursement only basis, which means we have to spend money before we can ask for that money back from the State Department. In order to do that, we have to have cash flow cash flow within that fund and we normally keep about five hundred thousand dollars in there in june of 2021 the board and the commission allowed us to move another million in there in anticipation of our ESSER funds coming into that fund um, everything operated well last year during 21 22 however coming into the end of the fiscal year we have to close our books submit all of our reports to the State Department and resubmit applications for those funds before we can draw down money from the State Department. And that created a very tight cash flow situation in the federal fund this past year. So in anticipation of another year in closeout, we would like to request to move another 500000 from the general fund to the federal fund. And that money stays there until the board and the county commission agree to move it back to the general fund. We would have to come back and ask the commission if we can move those funds. I'll be happy to make any You promise you will? <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, Thank ma you, Ms. Antrican. 
Do we have a motion? So moved, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Doty, do we have a second? Second. Mr. Reed, any questions? Do we need a blood oath to make sure you pay it? <laughs> I think Ms. Howe wants a blood oath. Don't we? Uh, we have a motion, we have a second. Signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? So moved. For uh, F, budget amendments. You taking that one? Okay, Ms. Andrew. Um This budget amendment is a request to budget $600,000 from the Project Promise 2020 Reserve. So these are reserves that the board already has on hand for that program. Um, these funds will be used to purchase eighth grade laptop replacements and also to provide an e-rate match. Um, the school district participates in a federal e-rate program <coughs> where the federal government provides an 80% discount on certain materials if we provide a 20% match. And so uh, this would help us purchase network infrastructure switches. Is there any questions? Yeah, so uh, when you, uh, you mentioned those laptops, what happens to the old ones when the old you're this is purchasing new laptops it is. yes it is and we have um this is new territory a little bit for the district because at the high school <coughs> um generally they go up through the grade levels with the students and then when the students leave mm -hmm. they're given the opportunity to take it yes. with them um these laptops will um, if they're a value of 250 dollars or less we can do this card or we participate i think the county may participate as well in gov deals where we can do online auction okay. of equipment okay. and so just depending on the condition of the equipment right. thank you we can determine the, the route do we have a motion so accept. mr doty we have a second second we have a second all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? I'm, I'm sorry, were there any other questions in there? I, I didn't, I thought we were done, thank you. Uh, item 4F2, Fund 101, General Administration Projects, $418,050, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Chairman, this is the budget amendment that um, for the voting machines, uh, puts the expense uh, into the budget so we can we can issue the purchase order, and um, and then we're taking the money from unassigned fund balance, and we'll replace it when the state reimburses us for the, for the machines. Have a motion to accept. So moved. Second. Second. Mr. Long. Yes. Thank you, sir. Any questions or comments? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? So moved. Move down to 4F3, Fund 101 Public Safety Projects. I think everybody got the change on that. Uh, it is $71,678, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Sheriff Mullins and I will tag team on, on this one. Um, I mean, bottom line, I guess, is that we have an opportunity to purchase some, some uh, patrol cars um, and, and take advantage of a situation where the cars are sitting on a lot, which is unusual, in, uh, at a dealership in Columbia, which has the state bid. Uh, there are 22 Dodge Chargers, or 2022 Dodge Chargers, and we can purchase these vehicles um, before the 2023 price increase. And in the budget this year, in this year's budget, we have $123,000 uh, in, the, in the budget for the purchase of, of uh, cars for, patrol cars for the Sheriff's Department. And then um, two years ago, and in, in what prompted this request is, is uh, two years ago was budgeted two vehicles, two trucks, two, two pickup trucks. Um, 
for patrol division and uh, we received word about a month six weeks ago uh, and, and they haven't been delivered because of all the lo logistic problems and those kind of things and about a month to six weeks ago we received word that we will not get them and so uh, what we did is is we released that money uh, and, and now and that was sixty six thousand uh, dollars and it went back into fund balance so what that gives us an opportunity to do is purchase uh, instead of three which is in this year's budget purchase five vehicles and um, and use that sixty six thousand dollars that was committed for those trucks and budgeted two years ago and the hundred twenty three thousand dollars and then um, it leaves a, f a few hundred less than a thousand dollars left uh, to purchase uh, those five vehicles but in this budget amendment um, what we're proposing to do is is rebudget the sixty six thousand dollars and then uh, move five thousand dollars from the tires and tubes expense line and move that to uh, the motor vehicles uh, line and so we can buy those five cars take it avoid the price increase and also uh, the cars are there and we don't have to wait on them like if we had ordered 2023 cars and uh, that way we can avoid some some repair cost for uh, some of the older vehicles on on the road I ask uh, the sheriff to come and, and, and discuss with you guys the need for the vehicles and, and the age and the condition of his fleet. If we if we purchase the 2022 20, Dodge Chargers, we can get them equipped for around thirty eight thousand one hundred dollars. Next year, the 2023 model goes up per car six thousand eight hundred and twelve dollars per car. So we can save by buying the 2022s. Thirty-four thousand and sixty dollars buying them now. Like the mayor said, the cars usually are coming into Columbia, which is a state bid. It usually takes us between six and ten months to get them in, then they got to outfit them. Right now, we're having a huge issue with our supervisor vehicles, which is the Dodge Ram. We've had five of those on the road. That's the lieutenants, and three of them already. Four of them already has went down with the number five cylinder. We replaced a motor in one of them, which we put bids out for it. The cheapest thing we could come with was $7,700 to replace a motor instead. The other two, we just sold on gov bills. So trying to stay away from the Dodge trucks. The next cheapest thing we checked with Dodge uh, Durango's. We checked with Ford. We checked with the Tahoe's, just seeing what was the cheapest. Right now, if we buy these cars that are sitting in Columbia now, we can save, the, like I said, the $34,000. 34, uh, 2023 Ford Explorers, they're coming in at $38,000, not equipped. And to put the equipment on them is about $6,500. So next year, the Ford Explorers and the Dodge Chargers are going to be around the same way. Per car. Per car. Okay. Will you surplus anything that you could put that five thousand dollars back into the tar? Yes. Yeah. We'll, we'll so, the, cars, the cars that he replaces will be sold. And yeah, we'll put, it'll go into the general. Will, will some of the light it, lights and stuff come off of other cars? Maybe we, we do light. take those off for if one of them gets damaged, but we have. While we can take the money out of the tire and tubes, we order a, a large amount of tires at the same time, and these tires that we've ordered will fit these cars. Do I have a motion to accept? So moved. Uh, who was that? <laughs> uh, Mr. Huntsman. Uh, second. Second. Mr. Harville. Second. Any more questions or? Discussion. So we're getting five vehicles. Yes. So what what does that sort do, of. Sheriff, to your request for next year? I mean, this takes care of some of the vehicles that you would be asking for next year. Correct. I think next year we were looking at it. Well, we got our other detective. We have to replace that vehicle. But what what she's in at this time, 
we'll make it for next year. So probably in next year's budget, we'll be only asking for two vehicles instead of asking for these vehicles next year. That's going to cost us six thousand dollars more next year, just being a 2023 month. I understand these challengers are in our color, correct? Yes. So don't worry about painting them. Or no, I, they're ready. The only thing they have to do is equip them with the lights and all the, the cages and the equipment. And we'll, get them, we'll get them a whole lot earlier. Usually it takes them six to eight months to even get them landed in Columbia, Tennessee. Ms. Green, do you have? Yes, sir. Sheriff Mullins, at this point, how many officers have cars that they take home at night out of curiosity? Take home at night? Yes, sir. All patrol vehicles are taken home at night. They're about, assigned their car. About how many of those are there, sir? There's five per shift. There's probably around 30 cars. Are there any of the others that take their cars home at night? The transport officers support security that gets called out to do mental health transports, which is unfortunately a couple of nights. They take theirs home as well. How many of those are there, sir? Six. Five. I'm sorry, five. Okay. Have any other questions? What's the life expectancy of a yeah. patrol vehicle? The Dodge Chargers, that's the reason I want to get into the Ford Explorers. That's what the Tennessee Highway Patrol, that's all they've got. They're getting away from the Dodge Chargers. Marshtown Police Department's getting away from the Dodge Chargers. I think they got 10 Tahoes last year, and this year they're getting the Ford Explorers. To answer your question, when we're getting around 100,000 miles, we're putting a lot of money in these cars, front ends. How many years is that? They're averaging uh, 200 miles a night in the county at the 12 hour. <coughs> so around four or five years. Thank you. Have any other questions or comments? <coughs> All in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Do we have any opposed? Motion carried. So I'll have Mr. Chair. Thank you, Chairman Hahn. We'll move directly into the Public Services Committee. Chairman Richardson, you're recognized, sir. <clears throat> I think, sir, call the word. Uh, the Excuse me, before you go, that can I ask a question about the trustees' report before you get out of that place? Sure. Let's go. We'll, we'll retract just a moment about the finance. Yes, ma'am. It is for Mr. Long. The question is about in his report, and I appreciate him doing his report, but I have a question when it gets down to the employee self-insurance, and I'm wondering if that's the one where we're self-insured <coughs> that amount. I just, I'm just i curious by the ending balance and the disbursements that were taken out of it, sir. Monthly okay. What, what, what's your question? Well, the disbursements, if I'm reading it cor uh, correctly, it looks like $511,055. Are we getting close? Well, are we getting close to being short on it, I guess is my question. We're, we're monitoring that very closely. Okay. And that's why in this year's budget there was an infusion from each of the funds into the self insurance fund, like the general fund, the highway fund, the garbage fund had money appropriated to move into the insurance fund because we were running short. But not running short, but our, ba our, our balance was lower. No. Well, I noticed what went in, mm -hmm. so that, that's why I was asking. I'm assuming the receipts is what goes in to it. Um, the way he's got it noted on the report, sir. He's got $276,348 going in. So. Right. And so I noticed what so was month, coming out. That's how much went in. And then the, the expenses go up and down, just depending on what the claims are. And, and, uh, and we've had some, some cancer cases and some high That expenses. was my next question. Did we have some high dollar bills at this point? Yes. Okay. Thank you, sir. Now let's revert back to Public Service Committee, Chairman Richardson. Okay. Uh, any visitors wishing to address the <coughs> committee on agenda items tonight? Hello, my name is 
Elizabeth Brotherton, 339 Macedonia Road. If I could turn your attention to item 4E, the noise resolution. I am aware this is mainly for discussion, but if I could turn your attention to specifically <coughs> page 112 of your packet, part D on pets for prohibited noises. I'm not sure if you guys are aware of this or not, but this is copied and pasted exactly from the city's prohibited ordinances. You go on Muni Code, look it up, it's right there, copied and pasted, exact same thing. Um, as you can tell from my shirt, obviously I'm here because I have poultry. I live in the county outside of the city limits because I want to be able to have my birds. It specifically mentions the keeping of birds and fowl. Yeah. Roosters crow. I mean, if people have an issue with roosters crowing, they need to take that up with the Lord, not me. I didn't make them crow. That's just the way they were designed to do. Um, I don't have a whole lot of birds, but I'm not giving up my chickens. That's just, I mean, I've had birds pretty much since I've grown up. I've raised show birds for over 15 years. And um, unfortunately, many of the other people in Hamlin County that also raise show birds, because if, if you're not aware, there is a large poultry show in Knoxville at the Chilawi Park. Um, last year they hosted the, um, I believe it was the year before last, they hosted the national meet. So there are a lot of us here that do participate in this. And it goes into a lot of money. And if you haven't been to the grocery store lately and seen the price of eggs, I don't advise anybody to be giving up chickens right about now. And another thing that I'm concerned about with this is because a lot of us, I know there are some particular issues in the county with a lot of certain neighborhoods having some severe noise issues, especially at night, but this is so restrictive. You're punishing the ones of us that are minding our own business. Like, how are you going to silence chickens and particularly with dogs? I'm having issues repeatedly with people letting their dogs run loose in the neighborhood. Don't worry, I've called animal control on that several times, but when the people won't open the door, there's nothing they can do about it. And we have this issue continually. You've got a dog running loose, that gets everybody's dog stirred up. That just happens. Coyotes come through, same thing. you got somebody with cattle, mules, horses. We can't control the animals make noise. I mean, that's just, that's just how it is. But we shouldn't be punished for that because we live outside of the city limits so we can have those animals. And further, um, with this noise ordinance, where does that stand on fireworks for the fourth? I know there's a lot of people that don't like it, but a few of us like to, you know, shoot some ball rockets and stuff on occasion. Um, and what also I'd like to know is with the decibel level, I know at least one of you in here has that on your phone. And right now, we are exceeding the decimal level that you have um, at least listed on there temporarily. I mean, right now we're exceeding the decimal level. Plus, who are you going to get to monitor it? Are you going to have the sheriff's office go out to every single noise complaint? Because I'm pretty sure these fellows have better stuff to do than to mm -hmm. go over to somebody's house over a rooster or a dog or a horse or anything like that. Or fireworks, stuff like that. Um, there's got to be some reason with this because nobody like me or many of my friends who also have birds, I mean, I can't keep the ducks from quacking. They don't do it all the time, but when you feed them, they certainly do. Um, when somebody pulls up in the yard, the dog's going to bark. That, I mean, that happens. But when we have in there the word keeping birds and fowl and then making those noises, that's that's completely irrational to try to prohibit that um and further um what are you guys going to do about because on if you go all the way to the bottom mm -hmm. there's like a time frame for firing um weapons and whatnot what about the people that go out cone hunting i don't particularly partake in that but what about them i mean there's a lot of aspects that we need to be considering about this a lot and I mean, there's a lot of us that have expressed that we live outside the city limits for a reason. Mm -hmm. And my little girl shows these birds. I have over 20 trophies myself. And it, it just deeply disturbs me that it might come down to a noise ordinance restricting poultry. And for that, I strongly urge you to take that part at least 
out of the noise ordinance when you're considering it. Thank you. Thank you for comments. Any other comments at this time on agenda items? Thank the mayor for even writing a noise ordinance and also the commission for following up on her. Name and address, please. Oh, Dan Pellegrin, 3290 Sweetbriar Drive. I got some copies if I could pass them around. Yeah. To people. Now, I didn't make a copy of the actual of the draft. I could figure out if I got that already. These are some things that from the exemption section that may want to just consider and all that. But, you know, for the count, I don't wouldn't want to stop the uh, the county, you know, sponsored events from happening in there. I just didn't see anything in there, and I trust the county from not disturbing, making a lot of noise. So that's what the number one you would see on there it says, you know. If they have a parade uh, uh, from the county sponsored or charity event that they're doing, that basically they, they're allowed to have it. And also any uh, activity or duration, it'll follow along that they can get a special permit for, even though it might violate certain things. Like the, uh, since we all know a couple of years ago, the churches, they would allow a lot of gatherings. So if people were out in front of the church in the cars and and that's how they're handling services. I wouldn't want to block that. And that's what the number three would, would be for. And you can see I got a section in here for like temporary permits. You know, from people can get temporary permits if they want things, you know, like you know, neighborhood watch program, if they want a gathering in their neighborhood, they can get, you know, do that or a block party or the neighborhood um night out against crime. I've seen those things that happen in the neighborhood, so I want them to be able to still have the ability to still have things, even though it might violate certain things in there. And I just got pretty conditions that when they issue a permit, that they can actually go and, and look it over and follow through, like in the, how far it is from a residential area, which uh, they using a <coughs> amplification device, whatever, what, how they're facing and stuff. So that's just something y'all to consider things. And also, I didn't see a section there for penalties, so I mean, whatever you, I can make suggestions, but I'd rather you guys do it. And that's pretty much all I have. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Anybody else wish to address the, this time? Uh, yes, my name is John Lowry. I, I live at 7301 Sweetbriar. My property abuts the event center, so uh, from my from my lawn, <coughs> I reach through the fence and uh, and touch their property. And my home, the back of my home, my deck faces the back door of the event center. And I have over a hundred recordings of decimal levels above a hundred decimals from the deck of my house. So we, we definitely need a noise ordinance uh, for an event center that was placed in an area where there is no, uh, no barrier between the residents of Sweetbriar who have been there long before the event center was ever uh, given permission to, uh, to operate. And as many of you know, they, have been, they operated as an event center long before you actually even gave them permission. And so my, my home uh, is not a quiet place uh, once the summer starts. We definitely need a, no a noise ordinance. We need specific guidelines as to uh, fines uh, for um, going over the noise level. You know, uh, if, uh, uh, if we can use uh, an iPhone, my understanding is the uh, app on the iPhone is 1% uh, off as far as a, a decimal level. So if any of your law enforcement people uh, would come and put the app on their iPhone and see that it's 100 decibels, uh, that range might be 99, it might be 101. But I, I doubt that you'll ever find where it's 
50 or 60. Uh, 50 or 60 is about the road traffic from 11E back to the house. So if you have a heavy load uh, during early morning or later in the night where people are going home, you may hit the 50 to 60 level, but you certainly shouldn't hit 100 decibels. And so uh, I'm in favor of a noise ordinance as soon as possible because the season's about to begin. Uh, I know a num number of my neighbors uh, that live on the same side, the way the houses are designed, the bedrooms are in the back and their children are kept up at night. Uh, some of them to tears, there's some senior citizens. Uh, I happen to be one of them and uh, you know, we don't stay up all night and we've been, we've been kept out and we've even had people had to go to a hotel because they couldn't stand the boom boom any longer. So I'd appreciate a noise ordinance as soon as possible. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Anyone else? Hello, I am Rachel Acuff. I live at 4948 Old Kentucky Road. Um, I, I could speak for much longer than five minutes on this topic. Um, we moved when I was 22 weeks pregnant with our only child um, to our house. And we lived just off of, um, just in Brandy's place behind Molly, just about two miles away before uh, we lived here, where we live now. Um, from the moment we moved in, we've had issues with a neighbor who comes and goes at all hours of the night, leaves three dogs tied outside her house, and they bark constantly. We have hundreds and hundreds of videos. We've had police come to our house. They've told us there's nothing that they can do um, because there is no noise ordinance. Uh, we will turn music on in our backyard so that we can hear that instead of dogs barking. Uh, we have a four-year-old now. This has been going on for four full years. And I just want to speak to um, what kind of duress that puts you under. We bought the house that we thought was going to be the home for our family forever. Um, and I worked um, for Hamblin County Schools for 11 years before I just moved a few years ago to Greenville um, in the hopes that maybe eventually we could relocate our family um, because of this issue. I'm all for um, poultry and keeping of animals, but I believe that we're going to have to have some really strict rules about how that's enforced when it comes to pets and um, versus poultry, perhaps cattle. Um, my father-in-law owns over 40 head of cattle. I'm no stranger to the things that come along with that. Um, but when it comes to our neighbor who chooses to come home at 3 o'clock in the morning and leave her dogs tied out, so that they will bark continuously for her to let them off the tie out and then to be told that there's nothing that we can do about that while it's waking up my child repeatedly. Um, I just urge you to consider the mental toll and the loss of property that people like us experience um, to the point of uprooting our lives because of some dogs. And by the way, we have dogs and cats. We're animal people, but our dogs don't do that. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Wendell and Holden. My fiction say 2343 Spring Road. <laughs> I still hadn't forgot that I live there. 8150 West Point Drive. Well, I'm for the ordinance, especially when it's noisy and there's a lot of racket. But what I want to know is, We've got laws right now, it's on the books. It's been on the books ever since I've been a kid. They ain't never been enforced. So why make laws if you ain't gonna enforce them? Why make new laws if you ain't even gonna enforce the old laws? It don't make sense. It doesn't. I don't know, only God knows. Thank you for your comment. Anybody else? Uh, Mike John Cox, 3121 Three Springs Road. I'm all for the noise ordinance, but I want you to think about common sense too. Uh, we have power outage. I'm gonna fire my generator off. I run it, you know, I don't fool around. My wife has breathing problems. I don't care if it's in the afternoon or if it's two o'clock in the morning. I want the right still to be able to use common sense 
can take care of myself. I'm too old to live without electric and the comforts that it provides. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay, if not, we'll continue on. Uh, we have no old business, the new business, uh, surplus items for assessor of property, uh, 4A. Uh, Mr. Ely is not here. Um, it looks to me like uh, they're wanting to surplus some outdated equipment. And um, so we'll take that into, Mr. Mayor, do you have any other? Uh, it's, just, it's just outdated equipment? Outdated okay. Equipment. Okay. So um, I guess he's asking for permission. So can we uh, have a motion to uh, give Mr. Ely permission to surplus that equipment? So moved. Second. Any discussion? If not, let's uh, take the vote. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed the like sign. Motion carries. <clears throat> the next one is resolution authorizing Hamlin County to make a 2023 CDBG grant application. Mayor Fritton. The, um, this is a resolution asking for permission for us to, to apply for the CDBG grant that we historically over the last 10 years have used to purchase uh, fire trucks for the fire departments. And um, we applied in 2022 uh, cycle for South Volunteer uh, Fire Department and, and finished 17th out of 14 awards. So we did not get awarded in the 2022 cycle. So we're uh, planning on uh, tweaking our application <coughs> and we want to apply for it again in 2023. This, this is for um, a grant for the South Volunteer Fire Department for a fire truck for them. Okay. Uh, can we have that in the form of a motion? Make a motion. Motion by Mr. Long. Second. Second. Second by Mr. Harwell. Any discussion? Put that to the form of a vote. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed uh, the like sign. Motion carries. <clears throat> Item 4C. Resolution to amend the Hamlin County zoning resolution for development standards uh, for the sanitary landfills. Mr. Mayor. This comes to, to the commission from both the road commission and the planning commission, which has, has recommended uh, a change to our, our zoning regulation on landfill development. <coughs> Where this, uh, this is one piece of um, a big puzzle on um, expanding our landfill and GFL expanding their landfill and lowland and uh, during this process as we've been working through this um, we discovered that our zoning regulation for landfill development was more strict than what the uh, state regulation is and the state regulates landfills and there's an attorney general's opinion that um, says that county restrictions on landfills cannot be greater than what the state regulations are. And, and the, the specific point is on our regulations is says that the landfill cannot be within 2,000 feet or any expansion cannot be uh, within 2,000 feet of a church residence um, <coughs> building, not building, but uh, business, that kind of thing in, in the states is more like 500 feet and, and it depends on what it is. So um, what the proposal is and what is uh, recommended by Planning Commission and Road Commission is that we, um, we scratch our 7.6 uh, in our rate, uh, zoning regulations and adopt and replace it with the verbiage that's in the resolution which comes <coughs> Um, from the uh, state regulations. And basically what we're doing is we're taking the state regulations and, and adopting them so that we are the same as the states. Okay. So can we have that in the form of a motion? That resolution? I move that we do so. Got a motion. We have a second. Second. 
second by Ms. Ahern. Uh, any questions or comments? See none, we'll take the vote. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed with like sign. Motion carries. <clears throat> Item 4D, resolution by Hamlin County to abandon all interest in the Grigsby Road. Mr. Chairman, before I get to this, just want to um, update you on, on uh, the debt that we are issuing for the expansion of the landfill. We got our rating from Moody's uh, rating service last week, and, and we remained at a AA3, which is very strong for a community our size. And, and so in the probably next week will be the issue of the $4.5 million uh, for the landfill expansion. The city has already um, issued theirs. Uh, this is another piece of that puzzle, landfill expansion puzzle. Um, uh, in your packet, you've got uh, a couple of, of visual um, aids, so to speak, and, and one's being is projected here. Uh, let's see. Chris, can you rotate that to the right? Anyway, what the, the, the closure of Grigsby Road is requested by GFL, which owns the property on both sides of Grigsby Road, and that is where they're going to expand their landfill in, in Lowland. And um, what, what this, and what's on your screen is the plat from 1985 that shows Grigsby Road, and you see kind of what looks like a cul-de-sac at one point in it. Uh, that's where Grigsby Road ends. And um, and that's where it's paid to. It's four-tenths of a mile. And then the blue part of it is an easement um, where, uh, so it's, it's private property, but there's an easement for folks to travel uh, with permission. And so what this request is, is to close the four-tenths of a mile or abandon it and then we'll go through the process of, of uh, deeding it to uh, GFL. Now, um, if, if this is what you want to do and you agree to it, I'd like for any motion to include that uh, GFL pays for any transaction costs. And, uh, and they've agreed to do that. Okay. <clears throat> so can we have a motion uh, to close the uh, landfill? Uh, our interest in the land or the Grigsby Road and that GFL pay for any and all expenses related, related to that. So moved. Okay, have Ms. Ahern, there's a motion, second? Second. Mr. Hahn, any discussion? Let's take the vote. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, like sign. Motion carries. <coughs> Okay, item 4E, um, Mayor, no, noise resolution, draft. Yes, this is, in your packet it is just a draft. It's to get things started as far as a discussion goes. Is um, During the process of, of preparing this, I reviewed about 15 different noise uh, ordinances, and they were from cities. And uh, many of them uh, were, had the same verbiage in it, uh, it led me to believe that, that there was kind of a template used by, by MTAS, the Municipal Technical Assistance Service, uh, the consultants for, from UT for city governments. And uh, so uh, a lot of this models uh, those, those policies that currently exist. Now, there are a few items in here that I, I really wanted you to look at, and I'm not asking you for, to adopt anything. Uh, this is just to get the conversation started, is, is um, like on page one under B, radios and phonographs, the time, 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. Um, is, that, is that what you want? Uh, and that's for, um, you know, during those times would, if there was uh, loud noises generated by radios, phonographs, so forth, 
during that time period, that'd be a violation. Uh, yelling and shouting, same thing. Mostly, I would say that would be a domestic issue. And law enforcement's probably already there anyway. So uh, again, between 11 and seven. Um, you have the pet issue that's been brought up. Um, I think we have regulations already on, on the books as far as for uh, consistent dogs. Now this is, it's like a, a barking, I think we have a barking, uh, a, do, a barking dog resolution that was adopted probably 15 years ago or long. And, uh, so I'll, I'll research that to make sure uh, what that says. And I'm thinking that's from 11 to seven. Um, in G under building operations, uh, what I caught there in, in, in is that um, it wasn't, I guess the, the loud, the loud noises, let's say, or any violation uh, could happen on weekends. And, and I, I marked through that because, uh, I mean, that's when put people do their home improvement jobs is on weekends lots of times. And so, um, and they do it, um, and in this, re in this uh, sample, um, any time after six o'clock was a violation, I extended that to eight o'clock. Um, you know, could we, I mean, um, and then I, I struck the, on weekdays, um, and it would be all week long, it'd be available up to eight o'clock. So think about that, look at that, as far as, you know, folks working at their home, um, on, on whether it be a home business or, or um, uh, on their, in their garages or, or whatever. Um, let's see, in H, I mark through hospitals because we don't have any hospitals in the county and will never because we don't have sewer service and you're gonna have to have sewer service to have a hospital. So, so um, I, I struck that. Um, and then on page two where it goes, talks about sound levels from property something we need to give a good consideration on is the decibel levels you know and what what is excess what is excessive and um and so um, is is 50 excessive or 60 or 65 those those were in some of the other ordinance other ordinances city ordinances but those are city, those are cities and and so um is that is that what we want to do? And we need to, to uh, look at that very closely. And then as far as making it, um, making sure that we use the right uh, device to measure the decibel level. And um, so in, in some of the ordinances, the sample ordinances, they were very specific about the, the device. And, uh, I was not as specific in, in this. So um, that would be something that we would look at. Um, and then at the, at the end in G, uh, I just noticed in looking through these that nothing was, was said about, about guns or gunshots and, and target practicing or, I mean, I can hear from my house around John Hay School, the, the gun club doing their skeet shooting. You know, is, is that too? Is that a violation? You know, so we, we just need to give some thought to that. In this, it, it would be an exception. Um, a person hunting on private property or participating in events at a permitted and zoned gun, gun club or practice range. So, and then there, there may be other noises that are, are some that, that you have concerns about. Uh, another one I had that I caught was about agriculture. And if you look at, it's under exceptions D, it has agricultural equipment. And that's between the hours of 7 a.m. and 9 p.m. Where was that? Where was that? No. On page two, at the bottom of page two, under ex exceptions. 3D. 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 3. Okay. Page three. Okay. Mayor, this being a suggestion, I think Commissioner, uh, Chairman Richardson has some ideas, but we, we can take this as suggestions and work from this. I, I, I agree with the gentleman that spoke earlier to, that we need to proceed with uh, good common sense. 
the gun club, for example, has operated for years. You know, that's we don't need to touch that. That's just uh, just my thought. But uh, Commissioner Rich or Chairman Richardson, won't you enlighten us? So uh, I spoke with uh, Charles Curtis today, and he is the chairman of the county or county <coughs> associate, um, county commissioners association. And he uh, he actually is the one that wrote the next document that we're going to look at, and uh, he indicated that this week, by the end of this week, he should have some new information that would help us um, in this process. He said this is the hardest ordinance, whatever you want to call it, to uh, try to contain and make fair for everybody. But uh, he assured me that he would have that information and get it to us hopefully by the end of this week. So, uh, and it might shed some new light on the subject. Part of it had to do with uh, <clears throat> the decibel ratings. Part of it had to do with uh, how do you uh, calibrate? <coughs> how do you uh, have somebody trained? Uh, is there another way to bypass all that? Um, and you know, take care of it with other means other than an ordinance or something. So uh, he, he was going to get all that information to us as soon as he could. And in your considerations, as, as we go through this process, think about enforcement too, because an enforcement will be difficult unless we're very specific. That was one of the things that he was talking about was how do you enforce this? And part of this uh, document, the, the new authority for counties to regulate nuisance, that has something to do with the regu you know, re enforcement and regulations. So in other words, uh, Chairman, that we could use a nuisance. Correct. Some way to uh, specifically address. It, it could be classified as a nuisance and kind of bypass everything and it go to um, enforcement, law enforcement at that point. I mean, we've got car club guys, you know, that, that drive their cars in parades and such. You, you know what I'm saying. We just... Uh, but Enacting it, something that's encompassing of our county could include some folks that are unintentional. Right, unintended consequences. Mm -hmm. um, Chairman, uh, yeah, I have, I have a question, please. May I ask the or the gentleman that has the problem and his behind his house, Dick? Uh, is it through the week that you have those problems when it, when the season, or is it just the weekend? <coughs> I do know that several uh, councilmen have been in your area and listened. We, we really are trying to, to, to fix this. Just like the chairman said, there's just, it's so encompassing. You know, we want to do the right thing, we really do. And I appreciate the gentleman who brought these, uh, uh, passed out the exemptions. And it makes you think because it may not affect me. I live in the city. I don't have these, so I don't think much about it. But this has really opened my eyes because we tend to not maybe take on things that it's not, doesn't bother me. So I really appreciate, and we, we really are working towards to help everybody. We really are. Thank you so much for what you've given us. A couple questions. Yeah. Uh, is that property in the urban growth boundary? No, but part, well, part of it is, the parking area about halfway up, halfway up the hill toward the red barn is, is in urban growth. In the, in the plan and the map that's being proposed for the changes, it takes in the whole property. It takes in all that. The other no. thing that bothers me, when you look at this page here, 
it says a long line of Tennessee Supreme Court cases has held that the counties have no authority. That's that's why <coughs> the statute was changed in, in 2004 in the county powers act, which gives counties now the authority, which they didn't have before, counties with zoning, which we had to. Like implement noise ordinances or camper related things that we're talking about. I just want us to be real careful that we present something that we can have some <coughs> teeth to it and back it up, you know. Yeah, uh, well, when, uh, when I was talking to somebody from the city, uh, he said, if you do not have some kind of penalty, then you're going bark, 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 and you need a bite. And, and if, if I have to call the sheriff's department, you know, the first time, okay, a warning. But if I have to call them the second time, I need, I need some teeth in this thing. I need it to hurt, because I mean, all we're doing is quit that, quit that, quit that, and we need something that says, not only write the check, and and by golly, when the sheriff stops you from speeding, it just takes him a few minutes to write that ticket. And, and you know, we need some teeth in, into these problems. And the other thing, I had a constituent call me, what do you do about people who have a, a private shooting range themselves? By golly, that's on their land and, and they, they made it. And, and, uh, and I have hens. I admire you for having roosters. I won't have it, but... Uh, you know, and and when it's time to get your crop in, your equipment's going to run with those lights. Yeah. And I think if everybody has all of that in an understanding, but when it becomes chronic, like the red barn, now we need some bite. And so uh, sooner than later, right? Ms. Janice, what limitation is there on our, our biggest problem is how uh, about having a bite is $50 limit on fines. Oh dear. Okay. Because of the right to a jury trial. Uh, if it's a now if it's a civil even if it's a civil matter, you would still have a right to a jury trial. But you know, court costs are a whole lot more than the fines. And okay. it's turned out in a lot of cases. And it's fifty dollars per day if someone's in violation of, for example, a property maintenance ordinance every day that it is that they're in violation. It's another offense. And so if someone is continually keeping this noise going, yeah. then there can be $50 for each 24-hour period that this is occurring. So the $50 does keep you from biting too hard. Is there any way to change the 50 $50 is a, a constitutional. Yeah. Smart. So it would have to go to a jury trial to be above that? Well, my one concern about that is a situation that was brought up in the Planning Commission about the gentleman who added on the structure and it went to court under Judge Snyder and long story short, it's 1,870 days that it's not been, com or he's not complied, which totals $93,500 and he's still not complied. So $50 I don't think is going to be sharp enough to deter somebody that's making don't know what they charge, but a thousand dollars. I'm curious, are you talking about the Don Johns? <coughs> uh, the one that was a store without they. Uh, um, the, oh, yeah, Ronald Boos. Yeah. <coughs> well, now, if you have to, oh yes, sir. I, I would just like to say, in reference to the, the Red Barn, and I'd say. A number of people are here because of the Red Barn. Uh, we really can't get justice or a fine from a barn that is guarded by county employees. If the sheriff department and the justice and the uh, and the jail employees are in essence involved with the Red Barn, uh, we've called several times and. Uh, 
what I what I've seen and what I've noticed firsthand is I drove over there to ask them during the day, please turn it down. It's rattling the windows on my house. And I saw two gentlemen with guns on their hips. Yes, Tennessee is an open carry. But I found out that two of those gentlemen work for the jail. So when the sheriff's department comes, and we admire our jailers, that's a tough job. You. Uh, you, you're not being overpaid, and I appreciate that we have jailers. But they're guarding the red barn, so when the noise comes, hey, how you doing? They're good, how's the kids? Boom, and that's it, they'll turn it down. And as soon as they leave, it's gone. So that's an immediate conflict right there of how, having county employees involved with that event center, especially the history of that building itself and the litigation that the county has been involved with the gentleman that owns that property. If you'll check your notes, you'll find out when the last time he was here, he said, I've been operating that place as an event center for years. Well, in his court case, that's not what he said. So we can't expect the owner to, you know, to be honest with us, and we can't expect county employees to be involved in uh, oversight of that facility. Uh, and I think you ought to consider not having county employees at that facility. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. I disagree with Mr. Lowry on the county employee business. These guys, I've, I've been, I've been in the neighborhood, and uh, these guys try to help the situation. I mean, they come up into the neighborhood and try to help the situation. So, I just, I respectfully disagree with them. But, uh, and we can't, we can't limit what our employees do on their time off like that. So, but um, again, what's what's before you is a starting point. Um, <coughs> You know, send me your, your suggestions. Um, we'll bring another draft uh, next month, and, and we'll, we'll come to. Could, could we leave this, uh, Chairman Richardson, as you get that information from Mr. Curtis, maybe uh, send it out to us or something, and, 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 and however you'd like to proceed from your committee to, yes. to handle this. We'll do that. And I would also like to say that, you know, we, we review this, we take what uh, we have from Mr. Curtis, we come back in uh, February and kind of finalize this so we get some closure, get some closure to this if possible. It's, it's been going on Wait, for some time. Is there, is there I, I'm sorry, Thomas, go ahead. Chairman, if I might, just a minute. I want to touch base with this with Sheriff Mullins. Um, I believe what, what has been seen is an off-duty jailer mm -hmm. working as a security person, not as protecting the Red Barn as much as as a security officer to like a bouncer, for say. Um, That's correct, and uh, the weapon he may have been carrying is his own personal weapon. It is not county property or county issues. So he's not acting as a county employee. He's Acting as basically a subcontractor on his own time. Right. Do you have a policy that, for that? I mean, yeah. okay. Question. As I understand them, we're going to work on this together. It does need to be tweaked, and I agree with Miss Peggy. I'm not a member of your committee, and that's fine. But it does need to be to the point that you can do something about it. I feel sorry for these folks. I live in the country, and thank God I've got good neighbors. I don't have to worry about this. But I can't imagine your child or your grandchild not being able to sleep. I can't imagine the gentleman was talking about he's older. Some of us are too, honey. But uh, let me assure you, there's no, there's no call for this. Citizens do not deserve this. And that's what we're here for is to respond to them. That's what they put us in for. So we need to be doing our jobs. Okay. I'm, curi I'm curious, can we, uh, can we start and, um, and, and start from the top down maybe and, and everything doesn't have to be done at one time? I mean, that document may take months to complete. 
That's the question I was going to ask. Is is there a way for us? Because there's a lot here to address. Address. Yeah. I don't think you can address all this February meeting. You can't come no. up with that. That's a good point. If there's a way to do it, maybe address businesses first. As far as that is that. That's what you want, sure. I mean, uh, I, I just don't know if we can, you know. Mr. Curtis did say that this would be the hardest thing for us to put our arms around because of it. there's so many variables and it touches so many people. Like this gentleman said, we're going to have to at least keep it an open mind and keep it simple. If we get multiple calls of barking dogs, when our officers and myself, when I was working the streets, get there, the dogs stop barking. Uh, cows mowing could be a coyote mm. coming through. Uh, we don't need to push it. It's going to be very hard to enforce. Mm -hmm. And it's going to make repeat calls coming in right after another. As soon as we leave because the dog's not barking, it starts barking and we're coming right back. It's going to be tough to enforce all this. Now, the, the red barn, I understand, is something that needs to be done, but a lot of this other stuff can be tough. And yeah, two, common sense. Mr. Chairman, two, you know, it, whatever we do, it affects the whole county, not just one area or one. Uh -huh. So it, it will affect the whole county. So. That's right. Mr. Chairman, you suggested we send the things to the mayor. Is there any way that we can be copied on it? so that we can all stay in the loop? Yeah, I'd like for you to, if you have any questions or comments, bring it to me. I'll assemble it and distribute it. Okay, I think that's enough. the easiest way to make sure that everybody's you know, in the loop. Yes, sir. Thank you. Any other comments before we put this one to bed? Go ahead. Um, why do you need to get it? Um, he has an need need to, to, uh, I'm sorry. If we make one, we need to have all. <coughs> Can't copy 8220 East AJ Highway, Whitesburg. Thank you. I work for Mr. Neesmith when he has events, okay? He checks the decimal levels through the night. Also, he pulls the plug at 11 o'clock. I mean, there is no loud music. There's nothing at 11 o'clock. And they have to be cleared out of his area by 12 a.m., mm -hmm. no later. Mm -hmm. And I mean, wow. is there any way that they <coughs> could put time limits on how late you can stay? <coughs> I mean, because you know, everybody wants to have a good time, but everybody needs to be respectful. Amen. So, I mean, I'm just saying, in his mm -hmm. stance, since he isn't here, that's how he does business. Right. That's a good idea. So, mm -hmm. I don't know if that would help. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, that's all I have. Thank you, Chairman Richardson. That's a lot that you own. And uh, we'll see if we can't get that going. We'll now move to our... Uh, Rules Review Committee, Chairman Hahn, you are recognized. Call this committee to order. Uh, does anyone have any comments that they'd like to make at this time? I just got a real quick request. Again, Elizabeth Brotherton, 339 Macedonia Road. Um, as I mentioned, Muni Code. We really need a way for us to be able to look up resolutions be able to look up ordinances and I have emailed y'all not all of y'all because a lot of y'all are new I have offered to even help for free last year or year before last one of the two to help compile that on my own time but when it's like for instance when I had to look up the dog ordinance over some issues the dangerous dog ordinance if y'all recall I had to make a records request I had to submit that form I had to wait on them to get it if it's on muni code I can just make a few clicks and it's right there. Um, it's like, especially with this noise ordinance, people aren't going to be able to access it without a records request. 
it's we need to be able to see things and all the resolutions need to be publicly accessible you can make a link on your website unicode city of morristown has it it's got everything everything is categorized it's a really great resource i just request that y'all would consider that thank you thank you for your comments anyone else wish to speak I know each of Stevens Road. I appreciate the time you have given and what looks to be true consideration and examination of the noise ordinance. That is truly a very important issue. It started with one item and now it's reaching out into numerous areas. So be careful when you do it, as you should be with anything, such as your rules. There's nothing that I saw online about this rules committee. It says again, discussion and consideration. Last time, four rules or proposals were brought out. What I would like you to consider is two items, whether tonight or preferably next month when people know what's going on or perhaps, perhaps an article can be written about what's coming up nobody that i know of has complained about your public comments or how you do them i have heard nobody say let's get rid of agenda comments i've heard nobody say let's get rid of public hearings when we have them on zoning i've heard nobody say unless it's being said quietly between commissioners let's get rid of public comments at the end of our meetings i don't want to wake up one day and I won't because I do pay attention, but I don't wanna see headlines, commission votes nine to five to get rid of general public comments or to combine them with other comments, which effectively cuts them in half. If I could speak on agenda for three and non-agenda for three, and you combine them and say, I can only speak for three, uh, I or anyone who wants to speak on agenda and non-agenda has been, their time has been cut in half. I've been coming here a long time. Your comments at the end of the meeting, there might be four, five people at the most, generally. There have been more, there have been less. Let's say there are five. That's 15 minutes of your time. I heard somebody down at the city council before you read the headlines that the council removed public comment, general public comments from their regular agenda. Now they're planning, say they're planning and I will assume they will at some point. They're gonna move them over into a work session in another room. That's not the dignity that should be accorded to public comments. Amen. And what was funny, a lady made just a beautiful comment. She said, I never, when you came to my door asking for my vote, I never told you, oh, your three minutes are up. So bear that in mind. Endure, if you don't like the commenter or you don't like the comment, just endure it and let it go. But I ask that you leave your public comments alone and I ask that you leave the 10 day rule in effect with nine days if there's a holiday and you don't meet on Monday, it becomes a, if you wanna call it a nine day rule. But you need to look at contracts. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Do we have anyone else who wishes to speak? Could that be me? Not yet, this is okay. public. <laughs> Get your chance. Okay. All right. Uh, we have no old business. We look down at the new business, and there's, uh, as we said, we're going to get started on formulating our rules and trying to uh, bring some order. And while some of the comments made here are well taken, I think some of the rest of us that 
least sit on commission. We have heard other people come to us and talk to us about the way we do our uh, public comment section. We don't intend on taking that away, but we do want to put some, alter it somewhat, but still give everybody an opportunity to speak in front of the full commission and in front of the, in front of the public that are here. So we have today or tonight about five or six items that we want to look at individually, all dealing with public comments. And the first thing that we want to look at is the placement of public comments on the agenda. Now we are, none of this is in stone. This is what we're throwing out right now to the rules committee. And then if it gets voted on, passed through to the full commission, then we'll vote on it again later this month. But one of the items brought up is, you know, where to have the comment section. Currently we have two comment sections. One is at item two, and then one is at the last item of the day. One dealing with items on the agenda, and the other dealing with items not on the agenda. We are looking to combine those together and have those at the beginning of the meeting in item two. So that's our first step that we're going to bring forward and I would like to ask if anybody or first of all let's get this going. I need a motion of approval. Does anyone want to make a motion to accept this? Is that open for discussion now or after we No, we will. You will okay. you'll get a chance, yes. Anyone? I'll make that motion that we combine public comments for agenda and non-agenda items <coughs> to number two on our regular calendar. Well said. So we have a motion, Mr. Cutshaw. Do we have a second? Mr. Huntsman, thank you, sir. We have a second. Mr. Huntsman's on. not on this committee. He's not on oh, he's committee. not on this committee. I'm sorry. There's someone on the committee. Need a second. Can I have a question real quick? Yes. Is is there a time limit that we're putting with this motion? Or is it there, just there to will, combine? No, no, no. There will the, be the a first time thing we, The first thing we're talking about now is just to combine. Just to combine. At yes. the first of the meeting. At, yes, it would be item two. I, I can second that. Now, Mr. Richardson seconds it. All in favor signify. Uh, excuse me. Uh, excuse me. We need to discuss this. So we'll take comments or questions on this. Ms. First Green, question. First. I, I apologize. Go ahead, Miss Hal. You're talking about putting them into one. Will that not, at the present, when they have it at the beginning of the meeting, at the end of the meeting, it gives us time to figure what is coming in the agenda and listen closely. And then at the end, it gives us a chance to make notes on their concerns. That's the first thing. Second thing, as it is right now, they have a total of Ten minutes at this one, six minutes at the regular commission meeting. Are you thinking about cutting their time down less than six minutes apiece? Because that well, doesn't give time to cover anything. Well, it's not understand most, something. That's not on the table right now. Okay. That's one it, of the questions we need to know what you're voting for. Anyone else? Ms. Howe, do you need to well, comment? Well, I, I, I don't want them combined. I noticed that I kept a little timer when Mr. Pettit came and asked us for all that money. It was 11 minutes. Amen. Nobody said, hey. It's not public comments there, Ms. Howell. I got, I got that. But the point is, the people who pay for that money should not be, you know, they, the, the taxpayer should be able to speak. And so far, we haven't had any complaints. And so I, I'm, I would be opposed to that. Let me make this one comment, and, and, I, and Mr. Yes. Cutshaw brought this up, and then I had someone else bring it up. And these are not original ideas, by the way. We have people that will sit here for the entire meeting so they can have a comment at the end, uh, at the end of the meeting. Yes, sir. And we're, the whole idea of combining these is to convenience uh, the citizens so they don't have to sit through the whole meeting when they just want to come in and make a comment at the end. So keep that in mind. 
Okay, this would be my suggestion then, because I'm not for combining them, <clears throat> I am on the committee. But if we're going to say that to make it a convenience, could we not make it uh, public comment and comments about the agenda at both? At both the beginning and the end? Both the beginning and the end. That way people could stand up, they could say their piece. But now there does need to be some time constraints because we have a lot of theatrical productions a lot of times when it's brought to the to the lectern that need to be controlled. Um, but other than that, I don't I don't see a problem with the two. Okay. Anyone <clears throat> can I say something? Yes, the, please. The, the reason I I would like to have it up front is because I've been coming to these for a couple of years now and I hear consistently that we don't listen and it's hard for us to listen and make an, a, a thought process of how to vote if we wait till the end. Uh, if we wait till the end to hear everything, we've already made our mind up. That's why I'd like to have it at the front. And we've already voted on it. Absolutely. I've had. Uh, excuse me, no, excuse me, me, you're not. You can, you can remove me. This is important. Sit down, please. Thank you. So, yeah. Chairman Hahn, uh, I've had some comments about that having to wait throughout the meeting. Yes. And and one thing that that should not get lost that this is a commission. Even uh, it, it, any commissioner here has the right to say, "Can we hear more?" Right. And we've allowed a couple of things tonight that were out of order, basically, because they were past public comments. Uh, there was no objection. We went on with it. But as we adopt rules, we're trying to do our best to follow the guidelines that we set forth. Uh, it, it's not a big deal. I believe in common sense. I believe in working together. Uh, th th it was just, it, this is a suggestion. Exactly. That's all it is. And, and I think... Mr. Richardson's idea there that by the time we get to the end of the meeting, it's settled. Uh, so I think it's important that we get the information and the wishes of people before we get to the end of the meeting. We need to know what's going on, what, what their feelings are. So I like that part of it. Uh, but this is, this is just the beginning process here. This is not etched in stone. This is just an idea that came out. Miss Ahern. Just a, just a comment. It's not negative or positive. I had an opportunity to go to a city council meeting because I was on behalf of, I wanted to speak on behalf of someone. I thought there were going to be a lot of people there. And I got to thinking about this. And I thought, oh, what if I don't get my turn? I mean, I thought that, but shoot. What if I don't get my turn? So, you know, I've been milling this over. I'd like to have my turn. Sure. So, and I, I spoke to uh, uh, counsel with the uh, chairman, uh, Coach Shaw. I just wanted to know, under this new way, would I get my turn? And he said, yes. Mm -hmm. He said, we will be having, you know, exceptions. You know, just like we did tonight, mm -hmm. we had exceptions. So it made me feel better because mm -hmm. I wanted my turn. And uh, so that helped help me feel better about sure. these rules in place that there are going to be exceptions. Yes. And uh, so I I felt better about it. Yeah, we've exceeded the time several several times to people who were making a good point and, and they couldn't fit it in in three minutes. So oh, I don't think my, that's an issue. My, my comment on that was we're only going to allow you know was it ten people or or 30 minutes total we've not covered that yet. okay i beg your pardon and remember these these are not these are just simply things that's, that and i've asked that people send me you know their ideas and these are your all's ideas that have, that have come in that people have suggested and therefore we're obligated to bring them before the commission to have them looked at this is a review committee so we're going to review everything chairman hall yes ma'am I am like Mrs. Ahern. I had watched the city council meeting and to my dismay, they cut out public comments. And I don't know about the rest of you, but when I got out campaigning, I asked those folks to vote for me for the simple fact I would stand up for them. 
if you are not willing to give the time to listen to them, you should not run for the office. You should not put your hat in the ring. They are the people that pay our salaries. They are the people that pay the bills. They should have the right to speak. And the only thing about if you put it all in one place, my nightmare is that you will cut their time. And in all fairness, that is not right. It well, just, we, uh, wait a minute, wait a minute, just a minute, please, sir. Uh, and I'm sorry, but please. In all fairness, the citizens deserve to be heard. In all fairness, you should have the opportunity to address what is on that agenda. In all fairness, you should have the right at the end to address anything on your heart. Yes, you have extended it for some folks, but some folks you have not. You have used what you viewed, not, you, it has not been equal opportunity is my point. Now, I sat here through the Lice Commission meeting and for the last three minutes under public comments, I was the subject. I will tell you that man had every right to talk to me like a dog even though I didn't appreciate it like I probably should have. Didn't have to pray for the man, but still, he had that right. That is his right under the Constitution. We don't need to mess with anything that is taking people's rights of free speech away. And I, for one, will never vote for that. For the simple fact I promised the folks in my community I would not. And I would pray that each of you would consider the folks that put you in here. We need to leave public comments just as it is. We don't need to play with this. Well, we're not taking people's rights away. I want you to understand that they still will have their right to speak. We're just trying to do this to convenience people and also to get the comment out there before any vote or any action is taken. Anyone else have any, any comments or suggestions? So if this is... I would like to say one thing. Right. Mr. Long? When we sat back here in this room and we watched what went on for the last year, it was an embarrassment to this county. There's a difference in coming to that podium and having a concern and have an agenda. There's a big difference. You talked to most of the voters, I did in my district, and, and they were embarrassed. They said they'd like to see the negativism on both sides of that rail cleaned up. Mm -hmm. So I think it has to be both sides that, you know, that public agenda is, is not a time to push an agenda when you have your opportunity to speak. It's voicing a concern about something. Mm -hmm. It's not telling somebody, you need to do it this way. <clears throat> so it has to be respect that comes from both sides. Mm -hmm. Now this is not to bring up city council or school board or anything else, but it's all areas that's having to address this because of certain items mm -hmm. that's being pushed. Instead of being <coughs> a citizen and having a concern, you know, it's different. It's when we get a set of rules sent to us from that agenda, from that group, you know, it, it's, you just want to see the negativism took away. I agree. 100%. I have respect for everybody there, but also I have voters that talk to me. They don't have to come here and speak at this podium. They call, they voice concerns, and when somebody says they've not heard of, you know, any issues about that, well, I have. They won't see it cleaned up. Mm -hmm. both, both, both sides. Sure. You know, be fair about it. Whether you agree with it or not. I'm going to clarify here. You're going to move it combined. That board combined is the one that I have a problem with. That's the most. I don't, I don't have an issue with we're going to have a 2A and a 2B about agenda items and then about non-agenda items. I don't have a problem if we do it like that. But if you're going to combine it and, like I said, take, take time away, I'm not for that. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, we have a motion on the floor, so the uh, review committee will vote on that. Can you restate that? That is to combine or just have one comment section as item two on the agenda and that will be for all items on the agenda and all non-agenda items. 
And one, one last comment I'd like to make, Chairman, to um, Commissioner Harville's point. Th this is coming out of the committee. It goes to the full commission. Each body, everyone has their vote, their point. There's a possibility of an amendment. There's always room. So this point right here is just something that's coming out of committee and it will go to the full commission if it makes it out of committee. Exactly. And it does not address the time limit. Not oh, yet. We'll, we will get to that. So right now we're just looking at one, one public comment section. And one question. I'm going to just clarify. This vote is to do away with the second public comment. It would. That's good. If it gets passed through the full commission. Yes, but that's what this is about to yes. do away with it. Yes. Any other questions? Concerns? No, I'm sorry. All right. Uh, we're going to vote Somebody the motion now. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. We got three. No, no. And then anybody opposed? Aye. Wayne's not here, right. so it's I three. Get, I didn't get Mike's vote. Three, four, one against. Did Chris get Charles, yes? Yes. Thomas, yes. Thomas, no. Yes. He can't vote. No, he can't. No. Yeah, we got that. We got that. Yeah. He was yes. Okay, so the motion passes, and it'll be voted on full committee next month. Next item we want to look at is, and I don't think this is a real big issue, but it's something we want to look at each item as we go down, is uh, your introduction at the podium. When you get to the podium, we've asked that you give your name and address. We had considered at one time for you to tell what district that you were from, and uh, it's amazing, and I was probably the same way before I came on board here, because I don't know what district I'm in. And I, well, who's your commissioner? I really don't know. So that kind of got to be a hassle. But the uh, what we want to do now is uh, is you are required to state your name and your address, and uh, I need a motion for that, please. Just for name and address. Uh, may, may I suggest one thing that that currently we have. The Hammond County Commission public comment guidelines already in place. Okay. That maybe maybe we ought to take that. Each commissioner, I think, has that at their their desk right now. That that we look at this as a possibility just to go ahead, and this is what we've been operating under. That we accept this is a possibility, and it includes your your request, Chairman Hahn. Okay. That, that we do that, but as as we move forward with other items that we could uh, add to or delete from this. Mm -hmm. We've operated with this for some time. Um, has everybody got that? Everybody got that in front of them? Which Hamlet, one are you talking Hamlet about, County, sir? Hamlin County Commission public comment guidelines for commission meetings. Number one, number two, number three, number four. My print is real small and loud. Yeah, mine is too. So uh, I, I'm, I'm suggesting that we, we accept this as is, as our base, and then we, we move forward from that. That's my suggestion. It's right here. Well, Ben, that you're making that suggestion, may I suggest something? If a camera is in the back, you cannot hear it. I, well, I and I understand, but I, I you go ahead. You go open ahead. the can no, of worms. Sir. No, no, we're not opening the can of worms. We're accepting this as is, and we will get to that point. I'm sure at some point, but that's not at the moment. Okay. okay. I'm sorry. Thank you. You, you continue. I misunderstood I not want you. To be I apologize. Known. I do not want to be cutting you off, no. Commissioner Green. No, so you're fine, sir. You go ahead. I just uh, I think that we need to look at that when we get down to it. But if that's what you're trying to accept now, and you're going to give us the opportunity to talk about it further down the road, I have no problem with it. But I just think that it should be where that anybody could make a video, four minutes, whatever, 
uh, to get their point out, and I think it should be able to be done from the front of the room. You cannot hear if it's at the back. Well, I have and a, at my age, I'm hard to hear I anyone. have a video that uh, uh, someone in the room took from the back when uh, Lynch was our director of schools. It was taken from the back, and it's clear. So I, I, just re I, I don't agree with your statement, but I, that'll be up to a vote, I'm sure, at some point. So I understand. Well, we have one that was made from the back, and I think I was the one that made it. I couldn't hear. I'm sorry. So I'm so, I, it may be my age. I'm not going to yeah. tell you it's not, right. but I don't think it was personally. We'll get into that. Right. Um, anyway, Chairman Hahn, sorry for the interruption. That's my that. suggestion to you. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I... The uh, name and address, uh, I need a motion on that. I'll make that motion. And I need a second. Second. Any other discussion? Anybody? Question. Yes. Why do you need their full address? Why not say Hamlin County resident? Miss, when Miss Phillips was here, she made a very valid poem. Miss who? Miss Phillips. Okay. Nancy, I think. I hope I'm correct. You are. Uh, she made a point that she didn't feel comfortable giving her address because she was afraid of retaliation, if I remember her statement correct during some of the former rules committee meetings, sir. So why not just, if they're a Hamlin County resident, they should have that opportunity. Well, we, well and I agree with you there. Without but, giving their full address. But how do we know they're a Hamlin County residents without their address? Well, you, how do you validate it with their address? You don't run it to check it, I'm assuming, sir. Well, we can yeah, but if I tell you I'm a Hamlin County citizen, you should be able to look it up without any trouble, just as easy. Or if I say I'm a Hamlin County citizen and I live on Cameron Road. <coughs> Anyone else? So we're going to vote the motion. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Now we'll move down to the time constraints. Already discussed that somewhat. The suggestion coming from other county commissioners has been to limit three minutes. And during committee meetings, you will have, we will allow a total of 15 minutes for each committee, which would be essentially five people, which would essentially not take anything away from anyone with, as we said before, we can extend that time if necessary. Why not just a, yeah. Why not just leave it as it is? I mean, five minutes is not that much. And I don't care to give five minutes. I don't care to give six minutes as far as the commission per individual. I feel like that's a right they've got. I mean, we built, America's built on free speech, sir. So by basically by trying to cut their opportunity to speak, you're trying to take their free speech away. No, ma'am, disagree. We give them, this is, this is a privilege to speak before the commission it's not a right. It's a privilege to come to the microphone. We're giving each person three minutes. That's the proposal that's been brought in by our fellow commissioners, and I'm reading that to you. Well, I'm sure you are, sir, but I don't see it. Okay. And on the 20th or whenever the meeting is, you'll have a right if this passes. You'll have a right to vote on the thing, okay? Yes, sir. Okay, do I have a motion? To accept this, uh, well, we need to make a motion that. Um, okay, a motion to extend to each person three minutes. Yes. During our commission meeting, or are we doing commissioner committee meeting? Well, right now we're doing committee. Okay, three minutes. It's a fifteen minute yes. total per committee. Right. I'll make a motion that we allow each, um, each citizen to come with three minutes uh, with a total of 15 minutes per committee. However, always the possibility for, yes. Do we have a second? 
So moved. So moved, Thomas Bodie. Any other discussion from anyone? Mr. Chairman, <clears throat> um, if, um, if we combine both of them to, um, uh, you know, agenda, non-agenda items, uh, and we normally give them three minutes each, give, give them, give, give the speaker three minutes each, that's a total of six minutes. Um, if we went to uh, a five minute and discounted the fact that you don't have to say your name twice um, and your address twice, would that uh, be a compromise? <coughs> Could that be a compromise to combining both of them? Well, that's not the motion that we've got on the floor right now, but we can amend that. And uh, that's just discussion. I mean, for committee. For committee. And or, the, you know, just we're talking about the committee meetings now only. Right. You know, uh, if I may state that I think committee meetings should be agenda items on. And our commission meeting is when we can hear... Um, I mean, that, that's the way we do it now. Our committee meetings are for agenda items only. We don't actually have a non-agenda item speaking time in our committee meetings. So, um, so maybe, maybe, we, uh, maybe we make that agenda item only for committees and, and keep it at the three minutes per. For committees. For committees. Again, this is discussion, folks. Just trying to nail it down. An idea. Any other suggestions or comments? Still with a limit of 15. Yeah, per committee. Per committee. I mean, we've got five committees tonight. And, and each committee would have uh, their own agenda. Well, as long as uh, Miss Ahern gets her turn, <laughs> I'd be the. She shall. She shall. <clears throat> uh, we'll vote it. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. So carried. Um, that's really all we have on. We're not going to address public comment for. For the uh, commission meeting. For commission meetings. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Public comment for commission meetings. So we're back to square one on our for our commission meetings. And uh, we've hashed over pretty good about the agenda, non-agenda items. So this to, is yes. Go ahead. Uh, no, uh, to Miss Green's point, you know, uh, as far as stating your name and address. Uh, you know, we could have a sign-in sheet and let the chairman recognize the speaker. Call them up. We could do that. And uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be uh, publicly stated, the address. That's so The only correct. thing against that is if I'm running late and I'm on that side, how do I get I mean, the sign-in to I be I understand. Out? Again, we, we've got, you know, Miss Green, there's always a possibility. I get you. We've had Tony Pettit come in late. Yes, sir. We've had different speakers, and to Miss Howe earlier tonight, you know, she was suggesting that we gave Tony or the sheriff or whomever. We give them leeway. We do, yes. They're, they're working for us, and, uh, you know, they, they get that. But when it comes to public comments, to be fair to everyone. You know, that, that's what we're trying to do is to be fair to everyone. If we treat this person this way, we have to treat that person that way. That's, that's the issue that we're at hand here, that, that we're trying to come to where we can all agree and, and how we have decorum. And along with that, if you get moved by the Lord to talk and you've not signed in, <laughs> do, do we allow them well, that opportunity? You know, uh, it this, goes back to the running late, you can't sign. Th in. This body can always vote by majority to add them to that, you know? Uh, there, there's nothing that says we can't do that. If, if we want that rule in there, if someone's running late and, and they come in late, they didn't sign in, 
maybe they, they state their name and address at that point. Well, you can always leave a signing sheet back there for anybody running late. Well, and, you know, we're transporting at 30 feet. It's not a not a huge deal. So we can we can we can do that. I like that idea, and it kind of takes your concern from Miss Phillips away on the retaliation. So I I, I like that. And, We'll have an ongoing signing sheet at the back, so if you do come in late, you can sign in and we can just transport that up. Nobody has to say anything but their name when they come up and we've got their address. So is that an amendment to what will end up being item 10B where we just made motion that speakers must say their name and address? Uh, possibly, Thomas. That was an afterthought of mine. Yeah. Possibly. I mean, we're in committee right now. We can choose it. Yeah. 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 So no you problem. could put a, a, a clipboard on the, on the podium. Right. Come up, sign your name and address. I'm Mike. I'd like to say this. And mm -hmm. you sign in there. Yeah. And that way it's, and it's here. And Anybody if you want can come to keep it from disturbing everybody, I mean, generally we have a county officer that will be working the meeting could be at the back and when we move the clipboard to the back then people can sign it back there and if we have signatures when it comes time for the public comment section he could bring it forward five minutes before meeting we'll try to take that up and i guess before we start the meeting maybe if we can all remind one another does anyone else like to sign in yeah So if they don't sign in, does it, that limits their ability to speak? Well, I think at that point, I mean, it could be the chairman's discretion. I, I don't, I, you know, I don't want it to be just uh, my discretion. It, I think it ought to come to the vote. You know, do we, let, do we allow a speaker after the fact? Because if we make a rule that everybody's got to sign in before time, and then we, then we bend that rule, so we'll I think the body, is, excuse me, we'll be back to square one. Yeah, I think once we make rules, we need to try to follow and that, our rules. And that falls through to why I said no or voted no on the first one to combine them because someone coming in late, we start this at 5 o'clock. It's a lot of people work 9 to 5. Yeah. And if they're getting in late, they want to voice their opinion about something that would give them an opportunity to end. Right. But again, I'm one vote, and everybody has to make that decision on their own how yeah. to move and, forward. And, and to your point too, Thomas, I've just had several say, why do we have to sit through the whole meeting before I can get up and- I understand. You know, and, and it works both ways. It does. It does. It does. It's, um, That's why when I made the motion, we could do public comment of agenda and non-agenda items at the start of the meeting. And so, at the end. And at the end. Mm -hmm. Just have public comment sections. That could be uh, an amendment coming up. But we'll see when we get to the right. And if people are getting off work at five, they could call in at four before they leave work and say, "Hey, I'm absolutely." I'm I like it. Some people could, but if you're working out on a a factory situation where you're on the job floor, you can't do I know it. Molly in particular; they don't allow the okay. associates to even have a phone. Well, we don't have to have. We don't have to collect <coughs> the names right at <coughs> five o'clock when we start the meeting. I mean, we can leave a signing sheet back there. If for anyone running late, because I certainly, if they want to speak, I want them to speak. It it seems like it's more to just for recognition versus the ability to speak. Right. Yes. I think so. Right to be recognized and in 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 lieu of stating your name and address, and just uh, you know because we want to take comments from county residents. It's it's a thought that. Um, so, okay. can we call on Jim? Excuse me? Do you need to say something? Um, if you're going to use a sign in sheet, will there be a place to designate which committee they wish to comment on? Yes, ma'am. If, if we do so, I think it would be name and address, subject that you'd like to speak of, and, and uh, uh, that can be set by the chairman. Well, we're, we're, right, this is actually talking about uh, our commission meeting and not committee meetings. This is right. for commission meeting. Commission meeting's a little different. When we come in, we're all together, and, and the chair has the, the floor on that. I had a, a, a good friend uh, tell me that uh, I saw her at the, our meeting a couple of months ago, and she said, gee whiz, it's intimidating. And for you to say, okay, uh, 
Ms. Howell, Ms. Huntsman, it's Ms. Huntsman, it's your turn. That kind of takes away the having to get up, you're being called forward, so that might help that. Okay. It? Okay. You know, I, I remind each commissioners, and uh, Ms. Green has so eloquently put it, her people in her district, um, you know, we all have that. And, and there's other avenues to contact each commissioner. Yeah. And, and if it's a serious item, we, we know they're out there, they come. Just like tonight, we heard, we had healthy discussion on the noise. That's what I expect from this commission. You know, and moving forward, I hope we can do that. These rules, folks, are it's a work in progress. We've stated that a number of times. But I will make the motion that we uh, allow three minutes per speaker for the commission meeting, 30-minute time limit total. With that, a sign-in sheet that will include the name, the address, and the subject that they wish to address. And therefore, maybe we can... Um, uh, let, let's say there's uh, 20 people that need to speak on this particular item, and we, we can delegate that and know beforehand what, we're, what we've got. I'll second that motion. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Uh, all, uh, just again, back to the Rules Committee. All in favor, signify by saying aye. We're good. Go ahead. I'm sorry, she was asking. That's okay. Voting? Well, there's just four of us, so. Uh, uh, uh. Unanimous aye. So carries. Okay. Uh, I think that's got, has that got everything? I'm, well, I, I, I mean, that's, that's, that's enough for tonight. <laughs> that's enough for tonight. Sorry, Mayor. <laughs> okay, so that's all I have for tonight. Again, let me encourage you, please, send those emails. Tell me what you, your thought process is, and I'll write them down, and we'll bring them up and see what, we're at, see what the ideas are. You've everybody. got mine, honey. Do what? I said, you've got mine. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I don't have to worry about yours. <laughs> All right, thank you, Chairman Hahn, Chairman Doty of the County Rules Committee. Uh, we just voted to allow the mayor to go ahead He must have felt like that that was uh, something that he wanted voted on, I guess. Well, we did. We did. So we did. It'd be item G, I think. It'd be item G, I think. Item G. I think so. Uh, 8G. We, we discussed, uh, he, when he gave that, we took a, a motion and a second to allow him to continue. Continue. Okay, that's what I was thinking. It back. Proposal. All right, give me just a second, folks. Mm, no. About three minutes. <laughs> All right, I call the Calendar and Rules Committee to order. Do we have any visitors wishing to address the committee at this time? That was Joe Stevens Road. Evidently, we have rules by ambush. Where did these rules come from? Were they in the packets? And you can ignore the question. I know when I pulled up my packet yesterday, I guess it was, I didn't pull it up again today, there, were, there was nothing behind the rules committee. Am I wrong, Mr. Cutshaw? <coughs> 
Okay, I'm not wrong. That means not one of you knew, well, I won't say not one of you. I would say three or four of you knew what Mr. Hahn was going to read off his yellow pad that he says were brought to him by various commissioners. Why, why are you ambushing us? Why are you ambushing the people and you bring stuff here and you just start talking and I pay attention, but I, there was nothing in the packet. That's inexcusable. Don't talk about transparency and the privilege of getting to speak when you don't let people know what's going on. I had a conversation with Mr. Cutshaw not long ago. Boy, was he bitter and mad and saying all kinds of things about me and other people. That is not that's not an item on this agenda. It, but evidently that is not an item on this agenda, ma'am. I want the I would like to see everything that you all passed in the rules committee removed from the agenda. And the reason is because you did you passed this without public knowledge of what was going to be here. That's why it should be removed from the agenda for your Thursday meeting. I've never seen this commission do exactly what you're doing now. And of course, part of it goes to the fact that Chairman Cutshaw loaded committees. So it would go just like this. And I'm sorry that some of you have fallen into that, but that's the way it is, evidently. Some of you made some very good points. But then when the votes come, and when somebody expresses a difference of opinion, yeah, oh yeah, you, you can vote about that next week, but we've already taken care of it in committee, and we've already put it on the agenda with the vote that nobody knew what was going on. I don't understand it. And I, I don't think any one of you can explain it, where these rules came from. Nobody will say, they'll just say, oh, some commissioners. But some commissioners have sent rules to be considered by this committee and then hopefully to be voted on at the real meeting. And yes, Mr. Cutshaw, I helped Ms. Green word some of those. If that bothers you, too bad. Because some of the things you do, some of the things that the mayor does, they're not right. But you won't listen and you won't do your own research so that you don't end up with things that are wrong on your agenda to be voted on. And I'm sorry that I feel that I am angry, but I will readily admit it. I have never seen, I've never been more disturbed by the county commission than I am tonight. And that's saying a lot because I've seen a lot go on. And you talk about the First Amendment, and this isn't about the First Amendment. No, it isn't. But what did you all do when it was the First Amendment? Many of you voted to sue people who were exercising their First Amendment rights. What did you do? You passed, we're talking about passing this, these guidelines that talk about no placard. What did you do when there was what you called a placard? You voted to sue people. It was in a committee, yes. Your time is Take up, Ms. Noe. Take this off the agenda. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to address the committee at this time? When you get done with your meeting minutes, I'd love the opportunity to speak if I could, please. Lynn Holden, 8150 West Point Drive. Don't care to give you my name. Don't care to give you my address. Because I tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. 
you know, God's watching you tonight, and he's watching me. I may not be supposed to bring God in, but I am. Because he owns the whole world and everything in it. Let's get to the agenda, please. And vengeance is mine, thus saith the Lord. That's not on the agenda. And the people that believe a lie is going to be damned. Anyone else wishing to address this committee at this time? Seeing none, we will move forward with old business. We have none. New business, we have the review of the regular calendar items with the change on 8F3 from $120,000 to $71,678. Also adding G to that section, 8G, which is to give the mayor permission to continue negotiations on the uh, proposed property for the health department and to add items 10A, which is to combine public comment sections to being only one uh, item at the start of the meeting. Item 10B, where speakers must state their name and address before uh, speaking at the committee. Item 10C, committee meetings, limiting it to three minutes per speaker for a total of 15 minutes per committee. And item 10D, which is public comment for the commission meetings, limiting it, limiting it to three minutes per speaker for a total of 30 minutes for comments with a sign-up sheet available for people to add their names and address to that will go to the commission chair to evaluate and call them up for their time. And I need a motion for that, please. Motion. Mr. Tim Horner, do I have a second? Second. Mr. Bob Holmes, second. All those in favor, let it be known by saying aye. Yes, and Thomas. Uh, discussion? For any item? Hearing none, call for the vote. All those in favor, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No. That's how vote no. So that would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine to one. Nine to one. And then we have review of the consent calendar items. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Second. Oh. Any discussion? All those in favor, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous motion carries. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. All right, thank you, Chairman Doty of the County Rules. And um, yeah, before we leave, let's take a few minutes. Uh, Commissioner Green, you would like to speak? You told me several meetings back you would discuss this and tell me where this came from. And I was just curious tonight if you'd give me that explanation, sir. The, uh, th those rules were compiled through commissioners talking to me. I wrote those, if that's what you're asking. I actually wrote those, but they came from the body contacting me. And also there were, uh, there actually there were like 31 rules that uh, Charlie Curtis sent us as guidelines and I put them on your desk again that was in November and I think you were absent that month in our committee meetings and therefore I think you missed something that day and I didn't realize until you and I were talking the other day I realized there was something missing in the conversation you weren't here neither was Linda that night yeah, and, but I and, asked and you in an email, sir, and you told me you wrote me off, told me we discussed I did what? I asked you in an email, and you told me we discussed I wrote it. you off? What? You wrote me off when I emailed you to ask you when it yeah, was. You just, wrote me off to we were going to discuss it, and I never had heard an explanation, okay. sir. Okay, all right. There we are. Yes, Chairman Horner. That was the last uh, Mr. Naismith from Jefferson. That's right, we've had that. You know, folks, I, you know, I'll take a moment. I, there's nothing to get excited about. We're talking about. We're moving forward. We're discussing. 
it, it, you know, and this is a majority rule kind of situation, and if the body does, it's like uh, Commissioner Harville had a great idea there. You know, and maybe that's what we do, 2A, 2B. I didn't have a problem. You know what I'm saying? It, it's a thought. It's a thought process. We brought it out of committee. Now it goes to commission, and we can amend, we can discuss, we can move it around, we can delay. We all have a vote to do this. But to sit here and think that we're doing this behind anybody is wrong. We've asked everybody to submit rules. And these rules were brought tonight for discussion and consideration. And this is what came out. Chairman Hahn of the Rules Committee has stated that's where he wanted to go. That's where we went. And this for discussion. But to, to even suggest that we're trying to this all public information, what we will be voting on. We've got 10 days to our next meeting. There we go. That's what I got to say about it. Are we clear? Adjourned. Yeah, please leave your notebook.